In Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen Wa salatu wa salam wa rasulullah wa kareem Ashadu illa ilaha illa Allah wa atila shriqa Allah wa ashadu muhammadin abduhu rasul Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Some of you know I used to be a businessman I like business I like doing business with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Tijara billah It's actually a very good thing It's already open So to get started what I'd like to do is inventory that's part of business is inventory. So let's do inventory. Want to do inventory? Well, you we don't have any choice. You can do it. Okay. So if you're a Muslim, raise your hand. All Muslims have to raise their hand. Whoa. Look at all those hands, mashallah. Okay. So if you're not a Muslim yet, raise your hand. How do you like being surrounded by all these terrorists? They're Muslims. <laughs> that slipped. Give me another chance. Whenever you give a speech, you know, you have to, you have to think w what you're getting into. Anybody ever heard of, uh, what's his name? Joha? Joha? You know her about this guy? With the Himar? You know who I'm talking about? From Bledisham? You heard about him, yeah? Yeah. So they went to him and they said, give a speech, give a speech. He said, I don't want to give a speech. He said, give a speech, please. We need you to give a speech. He got up and he said, do you know what I'm going to talk about? Do you know what I'm going to talk about tonight? No? He said, no, why should I give you a speech? And he walked away and left. <laughs> so they kept him another time. They said, give a speech. He said, no. He said, give a speech. Finally, okay. He's going to give a speech. He got up in front and said, do you know what I'm going to talk about tonight? They all said, yes. He said, why should I waste my time and tell you about it? <laughs> so he left. Then they went to him another time. They said, please, yes, sir. give a speech. Give a speech. No. Please, I shut that. Give a speech. Okay. He got in front of the Bible again. He said, do you know what I'm going to talk about? Now this side right here said, no, but this side said, yes. He said, okay, the side that knows, tell the side that doesn't know, and he left. <laughs> you like that joke? You'll laugh at anything. And alhamdulillah, the praise to Allah, Jalana Muslimin, the one who made us as Muslims, and we do thank Allah for that. Tonight's topic, the subject that we'd like to talk about, We're recording this program, so I want to wait until we get this subject taken care of because I don't want people to see it in the future and say they're torturing their children. <laughs> I'll give our sister time to take the baby out. Inshallah. Alhamdulillah. The subject tonight we want to talk about is called the beauty of Islam. Some of you probably have heard a lot of things about Islam. We've heard about Islam is peace. We've heard Islam is uh, inclusive. We've heard Islam is a way of life. We've heard Islam is the fastest growing religion in the world. Heard many things about Islam. But have you really heard about the beauty of Islam? I kind of came up with a name for this some years ago when I was discussing the situation that comes about when you try to analyze and establish why things are happening. One of the m most popular questions I think that we get, this is from non-Muslims, actually it's from non-thinkers. We're not even talking about rational people, they're non-thinkers. They're saying, well if there's a God, how, how come bad stuff happens? If there's God, why does bad stuff happen? That cannot be a Hindu who said that. Because Hindus believe there's a God. 
In fact, they believe in a whole bunch of them. So if having a God means you have a good time, they have the best time on earth because they got the most gods. It can't be from the Jewish, could it? Because they have a God. Christians have a God. Some Christians think they have three that's equal to one, and one equals three, and you don't want those guys doing your income tax. They don't know the difference between a one and a three. But to come back to the subject, I can do that. I used to be a Christian, okay? okay I understand. You can't do that. I can do that. So why do bad things happen to good people? And you say, well, how's that the beauty of Islam? The beauty of Islam is that it totally and completely explains to the point that you can become happy, not only with the understanding, but with whatever comes. Because it's, it's in the Quran that Allah explains your purpose. If you thought that your purpose of life was to hang around here and have a good time, waiting for a chance to get into paradise, Allah makes it clear that that's not the case. As a matter of fact, in chapter 29 of the Quran, the very beginning of it, Allah makes it very clear that if you come to this correct belief that there really is only one God, and the worship is really on for, for Him, then at that stage, you're going to be put into some really big testing. Because as he says, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Alif Lam Mim, Ahasab al-Nas an Yudruko an Yaqulu Amana. Do the human beings think they're going to be left alone just because they say we believe? And that they won't be put into a big fitna as the ones before them were put into this big fitna to show who are the truthful and who are the liars. Huh? So you said, I believe. Okay, get ready. Because you now understand that it has to happen because it, this is a, a way for you to know if you really do believe. I know it happened to me personally, exactly like that. I came in, and a brother, Muslim brother, came to our home right after I did Shahada. And he said, I want to sit with your family. I want to talk to you guys and tell you what's going on. Because all of us had come to Islam at one time. Alhamdulillah. He said, but I want to explain to you. Some big testing is going to come to you. No, he said, we've already been tested. We understand. We know everything. He said, you don't really understand. I said, We've been through a lot. You don't understand what it took for us to get to this point. And we had had some business difficulties. We had lost, you know, some material things along the way and was really thought we knew what he was talking about. Testing. Little did we know. We had no clue what was going to come next. It became unbelievable the things that kept happening and happening and happening between July, which is when we did Shahada, and January, January of the next year, it's, what is that, six months? Is that six months? What could happen in six months? Well, I'll tell you how bad it was. From a guy that used to have, you know, membership in these major golf courses, I lived on a golf course, walk out my back door, I was on the 14th hole of the Masters, in the country club I belong to in Dallas, have my own planes, okay? Homes with swimming pools. You get the, you get what it's like, right? Nice. Huh? Six months later, I have an old school bus. That's all that's left out of all the inventory of all the vehicles I had, an old school bus. And it caught on fire. And it was about to blow up with 40 gallons of gas in it. And I pulled out the fire extinguisher and was going to try to put it out. And when I pushed the button, it went, <laughs> it was defective. I didn't know what I was going to do. 
I got a tow truck. I got it out. I threw a blanket over it. Got a tow truck. Took it out to a junkyard. I was thinking, what happened? How could I be in such a shape, you know? Left the truck there and at this junkyard, 10 miles off of the main drag, the main road. And I asked the guy there to give me a ride back out to the road, you know. Just give me a ride out to the road and I'll try to catch a truck or something and go back because, you know, got to get home, which was many miles away. Actually, I was in Oklahoma and I had to go back to Texas. He said, that's not included in the tow. I said, well, how much is it? He said, I don't feel like it. Just go out there and... Somebody will give you a ride. I said, go where? It's an old dirt road. He says, there it is. So I stood on the side of that dirt road, and I was really thinking, what have I done wrong to be in this condition? A car went by. It was a lady in it. I didn't want to ride in there. You know, didn't even think about that. Then another car came by, nothing. Then a small pickup, you know, a real small pickup came. Had two guys already in it. The guy said, where are you going? I told him, up to the freeway, 10 miles. He said, okay, get in the back. There was no room to get in the front, get in the back. I said, there's got a lot of stuff. He said, just sit on the stuff, it doesn't matter. Bags, bags, you know. I got back in there, these big bags. I said, what's that smell? Oh, it's these bags, they smell really bad, you know. So he started driving, you know. It was freezing cold. It started hailing, you know, little pieces of ice hitting me, hitting me, hitting me. So I have to crouch down like this to get away from the ice, but it puts my nose right by these bags. <clears throat> what do you think was in the bag? Fertilizer. Really good fertilizer. It comes from Kanzir. Pig poop. Now, here's yours truly, right? I'm used to wearing heart shafter and mark suits. I'm, well, and I'm here <laughs> hugging a bag of... <laughs> yeah, and I'm thinking, what is this? It was so cold. My eyebrows got ice in my eyebrows, you know? And when we finally got up to the road, I, I said, do you mind to take me just to the other side? Because I need to go. He said, no, we're going this way. By the way, Americans are really nice. <laughs> I got out, you think. I got out, they took off. And as I was walking under the bridge, I was thinking, Islam is the truth. Islam is correct. I can't find any flaw in it. I really spent six months really looking hard at a lot of the subjects that Islam teaches. It's absolutely true. There's no doubt. So what is wrong? What is wrong with me? What did I do? I had everything before. I come to Islam, I get nothing. What is that all about? Is God mad at me? Maybe that's just it. I found the right way, but he's mad at me. Alhamdulillah, that wasn't true. Because you and I know if Allah is mad at somebody, they, they got a serious problem, not compared to that. Well, subhanAllah, I said, well, I, that's wrong. I shouldn't think like that. I went up the embankment, up to the main part of the freeway, tried to catch a ride, a big truck's going by, pew, pew. And it was getting cold again, and I was thinking, how, how? All of a sudden, a red car came over the top of the hill, like Lamborghini, you know what's Lamborghini? A real cool sports car comes over the top and goes, I said, wow. Because, you know, back in the day, hey, that was your truly. Here he goes over there, and he stopped, and he started backing up. Now I'm thinking, uh, uh, why is he back? Who is this guy? He's going to back up. He don't want to pick this. I look terrible. And this guy's going to back up. He's probably going to run over me. Probably, you know. Or maybe something we used to do when we were kids, you know, you back up to somebody and they come running, try to get done. Yeah. Say, you tired of walking? Yeah, run a while. 
I didn't really think it was going to be anything good, but the guy got back up to me, rolled down the window, and he said, excuse me, can you help me? I said, what do you need? He said, do you mind to ride with me because something's happened to me. I can't keep my eyes open. It's only 5 o'clock in the afternoon, but he said, it's just like my eyes keep shutting, and I've got to get up to Dallas, and it's a very long way. Do you feel like you could talk to me, keep me awake so that I can get there? I would really appreciate it. Let's see. I don't know. Do I want to get out of this nice cold weather into your nice warm car? Let me check my calendar and see if I'm busy. Turns out I've got an opening here. I'll get in the car. <laughs> I got in the car, shut the door, and I'm still thinking, it's brand new, by the way. You can smell the new. You like that new leather smell? You got in there and said, now what? This is, what's the law doing to me here? We start going along, and the guy says, please talk to me. I really am falling asleep. Start telling me anything. I said, about what? He said, well, let's start with how you wind up on the side of the road and why you smell like that. <laughs> I said, there you go. <laughs> Let's do that. <laughs> Let me take you back here. <laughs> you want to talk, I'll talk. I'll tell you everything I know. I guess we could teach the CIA how to get stuff out of people. Now just put them in the back of a pickup with a bunch of pig fertilizer. They'll tell you anything. But I went along with him, and I began explaining the events that led up to me being standing there, which started out about a year back when my father wanted to do business with a Muslim. And how I tried to convert the Muslim to become a Christian, how a Catholic priest got involved in the story, and before you know it, the Catholic priest accepted Islam, my wife and I accepted Islam, then later my father accepting Islam, but then other things started happening. Our business down by Mexico went bad and somebody ripped off all our stuff, stole our things. I had a brand new Suburban. It disappeared with the paperwork in it and I couldn't trace it because I hadn't filed it yet. It was totally a, a strange thing. Many things I'm telling him this story as we're going along, telling him what happened, what happened. He's going, wow. Wow, whoa, wow. Then we came up to a junction in the road. And this road that comes into Texas from Oklahoma splits. And one part goes to Fort Worth, Texas. The other part goes to Dallas. I need to go to Fort Worth. He needs to go to Dallas. There's a truck stop. I'll get out there. He said, do you mind... Really, I, he said, I, I, I just want to hear the end of this story. Do you mind if I just go ahead and take you to Fort Worth so I can hear the rest of it? Again, I have to check my schedule, but it turns out there's this opening and we can go. And I'm still thinking, what is this real? And as we're going along and I'm telling the rest of the story and he's going, man. And all that because you came to Islam. I said, well, I don't know what else to say. He said, that is beautiful. I said, excuse me? <laughs> what, what part of the story did I miss while I was telling it? He said, because, he said, you know what? He said, I'm a reformed church of Latter-day Saints, Mormon. And he said, and really, I'm fed up with my religion. And what you told me about Islam, it sounds amazing. So all he really heard me talking about was the Tawheed, was the answers to the questions that Allah gives you. Is When you come to Islam, the answers are there. But the incidentals that take place in your life, well, those are things that happen in your life. So what? Well, the main thing is, you know there's a law. And you know everything comes from a law. It's all going back to a law, and you've got the real hard evidence there really is God. And that's one of the beauties of Islam. Your heart is in peace because you know it's all from Allah. He said, so all of this is from Allah. I said, well, yeah. He said, that's beautiful. How can I know more about this religion? Well, I said, you know, there's some guys I'm staying with right now. I, I didn't even have a house anymore. Didn't have any clothes anymore. 
And so I told him, when we're staying at this house, come on, let's go over here. And we got there, and the brothers weren't back yet. They were at the masjid, but they'd left food cooking. So the food was all on the stove, and when we went in, served him up the food. We sat there, enjoyed a meal together. He said, well, I really have to go. Do you have any pamphlets or anything about this religion? I said, I don't really know what to tell you. But I saw some things laying there from Whammy. You heard of the Nedwat al-Alamein al Shabab al-Islamiyah. Well, that's my first exposure to those kind of pamphlets. So I gave him some of those. And he said, you know, I'm going to really look into this because this really sounds like something for me. And I sure do thank you. I really appreciate it. And by the way, he was at least 60 miles out of the way from where he needed to be. But he brought me right to the house. And there was a meal waiting for me. A meal, hot meal, waiting for me. Now, I didn't know that was going to happen, did I? A few hours before, I was standing out in, in the snow, in the ice. huh? And now here I am in a nice warm house, got food to eat. And what a lovely ride I had. And maybe he made shahada, I don't know. But if he did, maybe Allah will even count that as me giving effort to somebody to get to Islam. Now, in this story I just told you, did you see any beauty there? Huh? Or did you just hear, oh, this guy had a hard day, and it was really a lot of problems, and blah, blah, blah. What if I had not been there? What if I had not been there? And the man fell asleep and had an accident and died and never got to Islam. What if? Now, that's not the cutter of Allah. This is the way Allah wanted it to happen. It happened according to his plan. I'm just showing you, though, if you change anything in Allah's plan, weird things would happen. Allah knows what's best. And if you said, well, somebody died, how could it get worse than that? Worse? They could have lived. Because maybe they died on the fitra. Maybe they died as a Muslim. Or maybe they died and because of their death, other people will get to Islam. Or at least other people won't leave Islam. You don't know and I don't know. It's up to him. Isn't it? The non-believer is the one that has the problem. Muslims really don't have that problem. You get upset. You know, some, my dad died, and, and he did die. But you know what? Because I was Muslim, I understood it. And I cried, by the way. But it wasn't like the kind of crying that it would have been when I was not Muslim. You know, oh, why my father? Oh, why this happened to me? No. It was crying like this. I was crying out of happiness that at least he became Muslim before he died. Crying out of happiness because I know, although I'll miss him for a while, we can be reunited in Jannah together. And crying also because I know that this is Qadr of Allah and all of us, we're going to come to this sometime. And by the way, the Prophet Sallallahu Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, when his son died and he was holding him, he cried. They said, even you are crying? And he said, all of us, we have our moment of this. We have feelings, we're humans. So yes, we can cry. Everything that you want to know about your life, life in general, or your life in particular, is in Islam. Do you like to know how you're created and what's going to be your ultimate end in this earth? Do you want to know? It's easy. Allah said in the Quran, the very first words he told you, Bismillah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Ikura bismi rabbika ladi khalaq. Khalaq al insana min alaq. Here Allah is saying, and these are the first words revealed. Recite in the name of your Lord, the one who is the creator, created the human beings from an alaq. An alaq is what? Today. You can ask anybody that's in embryology, and they'll tell you, yeah, it's that little tiny thing that you can't even see with your eye, but it clings to the wall of the uterus inside of the mother, and it forms a blood clot, and it's shaped like that little worm-looking thing or leech that they have down in South America. 
And by the way, all three of those things are alak, alak, alak. And Allah described it before people had microscopes. Before people even knew that human beings didn't start out as little teeny people that just grew up big inside of their mother. And Allah described all the trimesters. Allah described all of the shapes being in shape and out of shape. Like a chewed lump. All of the things that Allah speaks about of you being created are in the Quran. And then your final outcome, where you'll be. He tells you everything along the way, but the ultimate is, Kulu nafsin dayakatumot. Every soul will taste death. Yeah? Wow. What do you want to know? Do you want to know about the creation of Allah? And he tells you about the universe. Do you want to know about the earth? And he talks about the earth. And the sun and the moon, it's all there. Where? In the Quran, the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Well, how much proof do you need? What does it take for you to catch it? He's given you everything. There's the owner's manual, not only for the human being, but the entire universe. What do you want to know? What you need to know, it's there. It's there. But the most important thing of all is to know that you can communicate directly with him. And you do not need an intercessor. You don't need to go through a human being or an animal or a piece of wood or a statue. But you can use your heart and communicate directly with him anytime you want to. Isn't that a beauty of Islam? <laughs>
how you respond when somebody gives you the news of the death of a loved one. You can't fake it. Somebody come to you and say, oh, by the way, there was an accident. Somebody you love real close to you, somebody maybe in your family, they died. What does the Muslim always say? Inna lillahi wa inna lahi rajim. From Allah we came and to Allah is the return. Yeah? And again, that's what? Beauty of Islam. There are so many things that we can recognize right here today as a beauty. When we see difficulties for Muslims around the world, do we see that? A lot of people talk about it. I've even had people write to me email and say, well, if your religion is so great and the Muslims are supposed to be in the right way, how come they're the ones who suffer the most in this world? Why is it? This is somebody attacking Islam by saying this. Why is it that the Muslims are the ones who are having the most earthquakes and tsunamis and floods and pestilence, deaths of all kinds, and their children are starving to death in different places and la, 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 la. You've heard it, yes? Yeah? But what happens if you go to those countries, if you go to those places, uh, right after the tsunami, for instance, immediately after the tsunami, I, I happened to be in Chennai, India at the time. And we were gathering up stuff to send to them. And I told the brothers, don't wait any longer. Get it over there now. They said, we want to get a bigger box. I said, don't. I, I've worked disasters before. And the first thing you've got to realize is that the people need help immediately. They don't need it a week later. Because a week later, everybody's out there with their bunches of stuff, and they don't need it anymore. You know, what can you do with 50,000 blankets, <laughs> you know? Get it over to them. So they did, and when they came back, they had to take a boat over there, and they came back, they said, you can't believe it. Said the only thing they wanted, the only thing, they didn't care about the clothes, they didn't care about the food, they said all they wanted was a hug. They just want to hug us and say, Salaam Alaikum. They said, we're so happy because we lost communication with the rest of the world. We're so happy you took the time just to come and let us know you know what's happening. We just want to know that everybody knows what's happening here. We had a big flood and said, we all know. We, we know you had a big flood. And so, alhamdulillah, this is what the Muslims said. And they immediately turned their masajid, the mosques, into what? Clinics? And centers where the people could gather. Didn't matter if they were Muslim or not. Hindu, atheists, didn't matter. Just come on. And the people came there and they were able to get food right away. Why? Muslims are set up for that. You know that. Many of these mosques, masajid in these islands and so on, are set up for Ramadan because we feed so many thousands of people during Ramadan. So they have the big pots. They had the big pans, they had the big areas, to, and they already know how to set out the sufra and feed the people, and they did. And they were feeding everybody. And in the newspaper, when they wrote about it in the West, they said religious centers opened up some. <laughs> well, at least they didn't call them churches, right? Muslim churches opened up today for the... <laughs> okay, whatever. The beauty is, when you see these things, you can also remember that this fulfills prophecy. Prophet Muhammad wasallam, peace be upon him, prophesied every single thing we see today, true or false. Did he prophesy that if you get into my religion, you're going to be living real easy, it's going to be so nice, you'll get big cars, you're going to have... Did he prophesy like that? Or did he tell him it's going to be tough? No, he told him it's going to be tough. And he also talked about the last days and the condition. And one of the things that he talked about is there would be a strong love for the material world and people wouldn't really be taking care of the religion as they should. In fact, they would be dividing themselves up into groups rather than staying together. Did that happen? Have Muslims done that? Well, it's one of the things we know for sure. Did he also tell us in the last days, one of the signs will be that the children will be so bad that it will be like you gave birth to your own, your own masters and you became a slave to your kids? Uh-huh. 
And we see that. We see that. Especially in the West, kids are telling their parents what to do every day. And the parents are doing it. And did he say also in this same hadith, saying, that the Arabs would, in the desert, would be building tall buildings in competition to see who could build the tallest one? Huh? Do you think that's happening? Duh. I was in one city here in the Gulf, and they were putting up this big building. Actually, I guess it was here in Jeddah a year ago. And I looked at this big building that they were putting up there. It was so tall. I was looking at it. I said, wow. I said, excuse me. What about this building right next to it? There's another building right next to it. It's an office building. This is an office building. I said, yeah. I said, well, that one right there looks like a nice office building. And it's empty. Nobody's in it. So why do you need to build this one? He said, so it'll be taller. <laughs> this is another beauty of Islam. You can look around you and see the prophecies have come true. No mistakes. Here's another beauty in Islam. The Quran itself. The Quran is such an amazing book that we have a whole website dedicated to the Quran called allahsquran.com. We don't have anything else on there except about Quran. allahsquran.com. Then for the explanation of it, we have another website called qtafsir.com. These are both English websites. One of the statements that we make in the website is this, that it's the only book on earth that if we lost every book on earth, we could bring it back exactly as it was. Page for page, paragraph for paragraph, sentence for sentence, line for line, word for word, dot for dot, with no difference in it. Because we have so many people on the earth today who have totally committed every single word to memory. There is no other book like it. And no one can produce anything like it. Try, go ahead. Find anything that you can make with 604 pages in it that people would want to memorize. <laughs> We have some guests that are not Muslim yet. So I'll just ask you Muslims, respond so that they will know. How many of you here would really like to memorize the whole Quran, the Arabic language? Raise your hand. If you don't put your hand up, maybe Allah's not going to give it to you. Hello. Second chance. Here you go. Get it up there. Now, watch this. Ask, ask it at a university, like when I go to these big gatherings. Ask them how many here would like to memorize their Bible. They go, why? <laughs> Let's do this. And I've done this before in the universities too. I would ask, how many here have memorized some of your Bible? Did you memorize like, uh, you know, two or three books out of your Bible? Like surahs, two or three of your books? Memorized? What language? We don't even know what language it came in. How many here right now have memorized at least, at least 10 surahs of the Quran? In Arabic. Yeah. Now, you might not think that's impressive. You might think so. But to a Christian or anybody who grew up with some books that they had reference to, they never even heard of anybody sitting there and trying to memorize it. This is one of the reasons that the enemies of Islam really don't like the madrasas. Because they know that eventually that's going to be the proof that Islam is the only correct way to get to Allah. Those madrasas where the children sit and learn the Quran over and over. Of course they hate that. Naturally they hate that. Of course they'll lie and say they're building bombs in there. These little kids are building bombs. Yeah, right. But maybe it is to them a bomb. Because when the Quran comes, there's nothing that can come against it. The only problem we have, you and I as Muslims, 
It's not Islam. That's not our problem. You know what our problem is? It's called nafs. There's our problem. If we overcome this problem, <laughs> it's over. <laughs> Muslims will be on top, as they should be. That's the beauty of Islam. The knowledge that there really is God. He exists and we can prove it. The Quran, the speech of Allah that you, anytime you want to hear what he had to say, you know how it even sounded. Bismillah, Rahman, Rahim. That's it. That's Quran. Yes. No doubt. Ah. The knowledge that the Prophet ﷺ was sent as the best of the examples for us and the rahmat to the alameen, the mercy to mankind. Yes? And knowing too that Allah said in the Quran, the only thing he won't forgive is setting up partners with him in worship. Anything else he can forgive. So as long as we're Muslim, as long as we really believe la ilaha illallah and try our best to put it into practice Muhammad Rasulullah meaning to follow him we got a real strong chance of going to the best place it can be in the next life where everything's the way you want it all the time and it's beautiful there too that's the beauty of Islam so I don't need people to come and tell me about the difficulties of Muslims today and what do you say about this and how do you deal with that. Hey, <laughs> I had the worst condition of all. The worst condition of all. Nobody has the worst condition than I had. I wasn't a Muslim. That's the worst condition. Even though the other things happened after I got to Islam, I still had the best condition. Why? I know la ilaha illallah. Make sense? Alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. That's the speech. It's all over. Go home. <laughs> Usually people ask me a question about this subject. And it happened to me one time I was in Egypt. I'd just gone to the Nahar Neal down, I don't know if you know, it was Beni Swayf or you know, it was Minya, these places down in Upper Egypt. When we arrived down there, my host had asked me a question and I didn't know how to answer it because I never thought about it. He said, what is it like, what, you know, mentally or what feelings and so on, to go from some other religion to come to Islam? What is it like? I said, I don't know how to explain it. Well, the next day while we were sitting there on the side of the river watching the, you know what's weird in Neil? Weird in Neil? It means the flowers of the river, the Nile River, the Neil River, going by. So peaceful. I mean, this is an amazing place. So lovely. And I said, okay, I can tell you. He said, tell me what? I said, remember you asked me the question what it's like to go from another religion to come to Islam? He said, yeah, yeah, yeah. I said, I can tell you, but I need one word from you. Help me with the Arabic. He said, what? I said, you know the boat? On the back of the boat, there's this thing like this. You can steer with it. What is that in Arabic? He said, Duffa. Duffa. I said, okay, I got it. Here we go. I said, imagine that you're in that boat. There was a boat there. I said, imagine you're out in the boat, and you're out in the middle of the river right now. You're in the boat, in the river. But you're blindfolded. Can't see. Oh, and your ears are... And you can't hear. Huh? Oh, and you don't have the duffa. And you're just floating along. Now, you don't know anything because this is how you started out. You've never even seen the boat. You never even heard anything. It's just feeling. You're just feeling around. That's all it is. You feel motion, you know. And sometimes you feel water coming around you. Sometimes it feels like this way, that way. You, you, and you're trying to guess how is it. Uh, well, it's, maybe if it's because I'm leaning like this. I lean like that. Yeah, that's it. There. I, oh, oh I let, look, wait. Well, I lean back and, oh, it's some water got on me. Okay, that's. But you really don't have a clue. But then somebody comes along one day and takes a blindfold off, opens up your ears so you can hear, and give you the duffa. Now, it doesn't mean 
That does not mean you're automatically going to go to paradise. Doesn't automatically mean you're going to get where you want to go, does it? But at least you have a whole lot more to say about the choices, don't you? Because you can see, you can hear, and you've got some control here that you can do something with. And that is exactly how I felt when I left whatever I was in to come to Islam. So alhamdulillah rabbil alameen, that Allah guides whoever he wills to his straight path. Another question people will ask me, how did I get to Islam? This is a very common question, one that we've answered so many times that we put a website up for it. It's called YusufEstes.com, Y-U-S-U-F-E-S-T-E-S.com. You can also go to WatchIslam.com, and the story of priests and preachers coming to Islam is there. We also have it on YouTube Islam. Now, not YouTube, YouTube Islam. You can go there and get a lot of these great stories. Now, and I'm going to ask you a question. How many of you ever watch Peace TV? Anybody? Okay, let me go the other way. Anybody here never heard of Peace TV? Everybody knows Peace TV, okay. Huda TV, anybody heard of Huda TV? Okay. What about Islam Channel in UK? You heard of Islam Channel in UK? Now all of these you need to have satellite to get them, right? Not anymore. You can get them all free on my website, watchislam.com. All of them are right there. Plus, the Quran being recited in Ramadan is running right now 24 hours a day. You can go there and listen to the Quran, and it has English translation right across the front of it. Plus, we have Share Islam TV, and we have a new one that just came out, Bridge to Faith.com. Bridge to Faith. Dot com. Now, in these, you've got a series of different speakers, myself and people like Mutahir Sabri, Abdurrahim Green. I think you know some of the speakers that we've got on there, and you can watch these programs. All of it's free, free, because I want people to know what's real Islam from people who can explain it in good English terms. Some of you like to be involved in sharing Islam with other people. You want to have a way to answer questions, to give them help. We have a website called shareislam.com. Shareislam.com. And that's great because you can go there and ask questions and it gives you answers. We have another one. People ask you about Akita, what we believe and why. It's called godallah.com. Is God Allah? Is Allah God? Where is God? How can you prove there's God? Then for those who are atheists or claim to be scientists, don't believe in God, there's a website for them, scienceislam.com. This has videos in it. You can watch nine different scholars, professors, teachers of disciplines, different sciences. Every one of them, after they knew what the Quran said about their particular expertise, they all said it must be a God, and must be this God is real, and Allah must be behind the Quran. Because it's impossible to be any other way. These are a result of Sheikh Zandani's work. Some of you know about him and his effort. I would like to mention to you that the last one, the ninth one, when you play it, the scientist, professor, when he's talking, stops and he looks at the camera, he said, I guess it's time for me to say, Ashadu la ilaha illallah, Ashadu Muhammad Rasulullah. If you'd like to join us and work with us in this project, you're welcome. We have an ongoing website right this minute as I'm sitting here. There are people learning about Islam from it live. It's called chatislam.com chatislam.com. We have volunteers who come on and speak and then answer questions. Inshallah, I'm planning on recruiting a particular daya here from this community to be on, be one of those to help us do that. But the brothers, they don't like their names mentioned and so on, but we will have somebody, inshallah, from this community doing the same. We have Again, many good teachers, some of them you've heard of before, who come on, like Dr. Bilal Phillips. Some of you heard about him. 
And some of you have heard about Mutar Sabri and the work that he's done. Salem Morgan, not very famous, but he used to be here, very well known, 25 years ago. We're getting him out of retirement and putting him back on the internet and helping us with that, myself. And what happens is when these people come into this chat room, they get to hear something that they didn't ever hear before. Easy English, they can understand what's going on, and then they can ask questions and they can get real answers. But just in case you want to ask a question, and you said, they don't have time for my question, okay? If we have it, you can access it. Go to search for Islam. Three words. Search for Islam, but write it like one word, dot com. Search for Islam dot com. And it's a little box. So come up and you just type in the keyword. You want to know about music. What's the role of music in Islam? Type music in there. Find out. You want to know about these different groups? Type the word groups. Want to know about women in Islam? Type the word women. We got a brand new website for women, by the way. Ladies, listen up. It's called islamswomen.com. And they sent me some new, it's brand new. We're just putting it up now. They sent me some new graphics for it, some beautiful backgrounds today to approve it. Really going to be tasty. You're going to like it. It's really sharp. And brothers, if you go to the, this website, islamswomen.com, you do have to lower your gaze while you look at the screen. Now, that was funny. You could have laughed a little bit more than that <laughs> You're still here. I told you to go home. MashaAllah. Do we have any questions? Are we going to do that? Jazakumullah here with Salaam Alaikum Rahmatullah. Most popular questions I think that we get, this is from non-Muslims. Actually, it's from non-thinkers. We're not even talking about rational people. They're non-thinkers. They're saying, well, if there's a God, how, how come bad stuff happens? If there's God, why does bad stuff happen? That cannot be a Hindu who said that. Because Hindus believe there's a God. In fact, they believe in a whole bunch of them. So if having a God means you have a good time, they have the best time on earth because they got the most gods. It can't be from the Jewish, could it? Because they have a God. Christians have a God. Some Christians think they have three that's equal to one, and one equals three, and you don't want those guys doing your income tax. They don't know the difference between a one and a three. But to come back to the subject, I can do that. I used to be a Christian, okay? okay I understand. You can't do that. I can do that. I'd like to talk about... We're recording this program, so I want to wait until we get this subject taken care of because I don't want people to see it in the future and say they're torturing their children. <laughs> I'll give our sister time to take the baby out. Inshallah. Alhamdulillah. The subject tonight we want to talk about is called the beauty of Islam. Some of you probably have heard a lot of things about Islam. We've heard about Islam is peace. We've heard Islam is uh, inclusive. We've heard Islam is a way of life. We've heard Islam is the fastest growing religion in the world. Heard many things about Islam. But have you really heard about the beauty of Islam? 
I kind of came up with that name for this some years ago when I was discussing the situation that comes about when you try to analyze and establish why things are happening. Do you know what I'm going to talk about tonight? No? He said, no, why should I give you a speech? And he walked away and left. <laughs> so they kept him another time. They said, give a speech. He said, no. He said, give a speech. Finally, okay. He's going to give a speech. He got up in front of him and said, do you know what I'm going to talk about tonight? They all said, yes. He said, why should I waste my time and tell you about it? <laughs> so he left. Then they went to him another time. They said, please, yes, sir. give a speech. Give a speech. No. Please, watch out there. Give a speech. Okay. He got in front of the Bible again. He said, do you know what I'm going to talk about? Now this side right here said, no. But this side said, yes. He said, okay, the side that knows, tell the side that doesn't know. And he left. <laughs> you like that joke? You'll laugh at anything. And alhamdulillah, the praise to Allah, Jalan the Muslimin, the one who made us as Muslims. And we do thank Allah for that. Tonight's topic, the subject that we... Some of you know I used to be a businessman. I like business. I like doing business with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Tijara, billah. It's actually a very good thing. It's already open. So to get started, what I'd like to do is inventory. That's part of business is inventory. So let's do inventory. Want to do inventory? Well, you we don't have any choice. You can do it. Okay. So if you're a Muslim, raise your hand. All Muslims have to raise their hand. Whoa, look at all those hands, mashallah. Okay, so if you're not a Muslim yet, raise your hand. How do you like being surrounded by all these terrorists? They're Muslims. <laughs> that slipped. Give me another chance. Whenever you give a speech, you know, you have to, you have to think w what you're getting into. Anybody ever heard of, uh, what's his name? Joha? Joha, you know her about this guy with the himar? You know who I'm talking about from Bledisham? You heard about him, yeah? Yeah. So they went to him and they said, give a speech, give a speech. He said, I don't want to give a speech. He said, give a speech, please. We need you to give a speech. He got up and he said, do you know what I'm going to talk about? 